Today, on episode 7 of 10 of the E30 Life After People Restoration, we're going to be doing the air dryer. Air dryer, evacuation of the AC system, and pumping it full of R134A. So stand by, you don't want to miss it. S62 with R134A. I have five bottles here. I'm not going to be using nearly that much, but I wanted to explain the difference between the old bottles here, these two guys, and the three new bottles. Forget the label, doesn't matter. What really matters here is the way that the needle hooks up into the actual can. These are actually reusable. They have a pinching needle, but there's a little rubber grommet inside of there that reseals. So you can actually um, use, these are actually old, old hoses, but you can actually use the uh, new style hoses that pinches that, and then you can take the hose off when you're done, and you can save it for later. Um, without that, you actually have to keep the hose on, because once you unscrew it, it just vents the atmosphere. So that's why I have these two here, because I want to finish them up in the car before I do these three. And then we also have a new air dryer. This is a brand new air dryer. It is pressurized, or vacuum called it. And the reason that we're replacing the dryer is because I did completely open up the system and I let the moisture from the air kind of get into the car. And I just feel like this the desiccant uh, dryer inside of the existing system is worn out and it needs to be replaced because if not, then I'm gonna have moisture in the system and I don't want any moisture in this system. So there, this, is, this is where we're at today and this is all we're gonna do. Um, so hopefully you learn a little something about AC charging in an E30. And yes, I'm sure you caught that in the background, that the bumper has some white paper sticker on it. It's not sticker, it's just dried paper. I just need to get it wet and remove the paper. So don't think that it's bad body work. It's not, it's just paper. So this is the old dryer, and this is the new one. And this is basically sealed already. Um, there's a bolt in here that needs to come out for the high pressure switch to go in. Um, but uh, yeah, this was kind of used up. Um, as you can see here, I used dye um, back in the day when I was trying to get out a leak uh, out of the system and try to identify it. Um, bad news, man. This stuff is terrible and it gets into everything and ends up causing problems for your AC system. So you really don't want to use. You really don't want to use the leak the leak die. Um, you really want to just install it correctly the first time. So let's take this guy off. There you go. That was pretty easy. Um, there might be some sort of a fitting here. I'm gonna have to remove. I'm not sure exactly. Or maybe this is where the switch goes. Maybe? I don't think so. Maybe I can take this off. bottoming out on it definitely is not gonna work what I've decided to do was actually um, since the two thread patterns on these guys this one here this guy here and this guy here are the same um, and it's the same exact assembly um, the real seal on this is actually coming on this on this chamfer on the top, not necessarily the O-ring. I'm losing the O-ring here, but what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna actually chop this off just a little bit, right? And chopping this off is going to allow this to sit on here and not bottom out. Um, and hopefully, hopefully it'll, it'll work because if it doesn't, then I'm gonna have to find a different, a different type of R134 switch for this. And uh, that's the worst it's gonna be. This is a Schrader valve already. So the Schrader valve in here is already keeping the pressure in the system. So I can always disconnect the, the, the actual pressure switch without um, relieving the pressure in the system, which is good. So I think that's the best solution. And I'm gonna chop this off here and see how it fits. All 
I think it actually might hold. I think it's actually gonna hold pretty well. Now let's remove these guys. You hear that? And let's screw them in. So let's break for a quick interlude and let's take a look at the factory cooling system. I have a problem with the fan not coming on at all when I come when when the engine gets hot. So the engine gets too hot, um, especially when I'm going home and I usually go uphill. By the time I get to my house, the car has sufficiently overheated. So I'm tracing it back to this is the radiator switch. It's a three prong switch. I got three test test leads hooked up to it. Um, the black one is the ground. The uh, low the yellow is your low speed and the green is your high speed. This is part of the factory E30 wiring that connects right to it. And that is basically what opens and closes. Uh, the, so this connector sends the signals right to the low and the high speed relays that then turns the fan low or high. And I'll, I'll demonstrate that for you to prove to you that the actual fan works. So um, what we'll do is, that's the way it's supposed to be hooked up. So this guy is your ground. And if I connect these two, because that's all that the switch does, this switch, it, it just, all it does is just connect two different points, whether it's really hot or not that hot, you know? Um, so what I'll do is, I'll just connect it to the high speed. You can probably hear it. And I'll do the low speed. High. So I know that the car side wiring is functional. I've tested it here and I suspect that this switch is bad. So what I'm gonna do is I want to heat this switch up and then I want to see if um, I have continuity from the black one to first the low side, which is your yellow. And then if I do, then I know that it's gonna turn the fan on. Now I could plug this switch right right back in and it should work but it I don't think it does I really don't think it does so this is the, what the test is supposed to do so let's do a, let's give it a quick run all right I've had this heat on here for quite a while and um, I have both the high and the low hooked up to one side of my continuity tester, or my, uh, my it, when it beeps. And then I have the other one hooked up to ground. So regardless of which one goes on first, um, it should beep. And it hasn't been beeping. It's been a few minutes, and this thing is hot. So I'm, I'm convinced that the switch is bad, and I need to replace it. So that's what I'm going to do. So when you evacuate a system, you want to have the blue hooked up to the low side and the, and the red hooked up to the high side. You can't miss them up because the sizes are different, so you can't go do them backwards. But let me show you how to put them on. Always keep this closed first, right off the bat. There we go, and then hook it up. Same thing for the high side. Let's turn the pump on. Open them up. vacuum pump off. You can see I'm just a hair over 25 inches of mercury. Here I'm pegged at like 29 or even 30 inches of mercury. Let's sit this, let's let this sit for about 20 minutes, half hour, and I'll come back and see what those pressures are. Hour later, taking a look again, and those needles have not moved. There we go, that's the right angle. 
and the needles haven't moved. So we can actually start putting R134 into this thing, run the car, we gotta turn the compressor on, we have to make sure that it's cycling, and we have to make sure that our pressures and our vent temps are correct to ambient. So let's give that a shot. It's about 65, 70 degrees in here, and it looks like it's blowing about 20. I'd say that it's working. Working pretty good. Oh my gosh, it is freezing. So, this can is going to be just about it, actually. Keep on shaking it. You can see how uh, you can measure it this way, right? Depending on your ambient temperature. Today it's about 65 degrees. So you really want that arrow to be pointing right in that, you can see how the little pie piece, it changes, right? It changes because you're still letting the can expel the fluid into the system. But you can see how, shake it up. Back and forth. Still needs a little bit more. A little bit more pressure on the low side. All right, just went for a quick trip. And uh, granted, it does show 59 degrees out, but the air blowing out of here is well below 20 degrees. So, um, I, you know, honestly, I, I gotta call this one a win. Um, I think this, is a, this was a good move, getting that parallel flow condenser in there and filling up with just a little bit of R134A. Remember, you can overfill it, so you have to be careful. Um, 12 pounds is a great place to start with the, with the new parallel flow con condenser and a system that has a different compressor not meant for an E30. It's got the S62 compressor. So, you know, there's a lot of different factors that go into play, so I can't tell you exactly how much R134A you're gonna need in your own system, but you do need to play it by ear and just be careful not to overfill. In the bumper just for you, just in case you didn't believe me, Guys, that is it for me today. Thank you so much for watching me, episode seven of this E30S62, Life After People Restoration. Like, subscribe, comment if you like what you see in the videos. If you wanna see more of something else, let me know, comment. I always love the comments, can't say it enough. Guys, take it easy, huh? Have a good day, and we'll talk again soon. Later. Later.